Today we are going to do the material world in the spiritual sky, lesson five. Let's start with our prayers as usual. Hare Krishna, all pits, please recite along with me the invocation prayers. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jai Shri Krishna Jaya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Sakara Sri Vajrayi Gaurakasavrinda Now let's do the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama 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 Hare 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 Thank you all very much for reciting very beautifully along. Let's move on to our verses for this uh, course, which is um, Bhagavad Gita 10.8. Who, want, who would like to recite this verse? Because by now, I think... Uh, Akshita. Okay, Akshita first. Hare Krishna. Aham Sarvasya Pabhavo. Mata sarvam pravatate iti matva bhajante mam buddha bhava samandita. Thank you, Akshita. Very nice recitation. Pratmej, do you want to go next? Yes, Mataji. Give me a note. Aham sarvasya prabhavo matam sarvam pravatate iti matve bhajante mam buddha bhava samandita. Thank you, Pratmej. Perfect. Brenda, you can go ahead. Thank you, Brenda. Very beautiful. Anybody else who would like to recite? Hare Krishna. Who is this? Does anybody want to recite? Okay. Mataji, this is Jagannath. He joined from the other number. We just came. He doesn't know yet, Mataji. Oh, okay. Thank you, Jagannath, for joining in and welcome back. Uh, we really missed you on the call and uh, uh, it's okay. You can um, memorize the shloka and maybe next class you can recite. Thank you, Mataji. Yes, yes Auro, please go ahead. Thank you, Aura. Very nice recitation. Anyone else who would want to give it a try? Okay. So then we'll move on to the translation. I'm going to read the translation. Please repeat after me. I am the source. I am the source. Of all spiritual and material worlds. Of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. Everything emanates from me. The wise who perfectly know this. The wise who perfectly know this. He knows. 
engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. And worship me with all their hearts. Hare Krishna, did anybody want to say anything? Okay. Okay, I just wanted to ask one question. What does Krishna want to say from this shloka? What do we understand? Does anybody want to summarize? Pratnesh. Yes, Pratnesh, go ahead. In this book, Akusha said he is the source of spiritual and material world. Everything mm -hmm. is animating, animate from him. Okay, that's good. So the topic that we are learning is about the material world and the spiritual world. So uh, Krishna says that he is the source of all spiritual and material worlds. And today we're going to see where Krishna resides, what that planet is called, and what it means to live there and to be with Krishna. Okay? So this is a, a shloka which I describes about Krishna being the source of everything. Okay? And today we're going to see that elaborately about his planet and how he is the source of everything. Okay? So let's move on to... 8.16. Who wants to recite this shloka? Akshita. Okay. Akshita, Pratmesh, and Vinda. Abrahma, Bhuvana, Loka, Ura, Avarto, Arjuna, Mam, Upyatya, Tu, Kauntaya, Puna, Janma, Navidyate. Thank you, Akshita. Very nice. Pratmesh, you can go ahead. Abhamma Bhuvana Loka Punar Avrti Nurjuna Mam Bhukteya Tukonteya Punar Janma Navetyate Thank you Pradmesh. Very nice. Hello Mataji. This is Nandini and I want to say it. Okay. Nandini, uh, we'll give a chance to Vrinda and then you can recite. Vrinda, do you want to go ahead? Okay. Yeah. Abhamma Bhuvana Loka Thank you, Vrinda. Very nice. Okay, Nandini, you can go ahead and recite now. Abrahma Bhuvana Loka Puna Avartino Arjuna Mam Upate Upate Kunteya Puna Janmana Vidyate Thank you, Nandini. Very nice. Very nice try. Okay. All right. Yes, go ahead. Thank you, Aura. Very nice. Hare Krishna. Who is reciting the shloka? Can you please announce yourself? We can't hear you clearly. Okay, is there anybody else who would like to recite? Hare Krishna, thank you. Who recited that? Was it Advait? Okay. Thank you very much. Very beautiful recitation. Anybody else who would like to recite? Okay. Let's do the translation. Please repeat after me. From the highest planet, from the highest planet, in the material world to the lowest, in the material world to the lowest, 
All are places of misery. All are places of misery. Wherein repeated birth and death take place. Where in the repeated birth and death take place. But one who attains to my abode. But one who attains to my abode. O son of Kunti. O son of Kunti. Never take birth again. Never take birth again. Yeah. So uh, in this shloka we are also talking about uh, how we can go to Krishna's abode. Okay, so today we're going to talk about where Krishna lives and how uh, once we go there, we never come back again. Okay, so that is that is that should be our goal, right? Our ultimate goal should be to go back to Krishna, Krishna's loka. Okay, Krishna's world. Okay, before we move, we move on to lesson five. I would like to com- do some exercises from lesson four because uh, we hadn't completed that in the last class. So, the first question is, Leaflessic opulence is possessed in full by Lord Krishna. Can somebody give the answer? No, I don't need Six opulences. This is from lesson four. Yes, this is from lesson four. Okay, I'll, I'll start with the first few. The first one is wealth. The second one is knowledge. Does anybody want to give um, the other rest of the answers? Pratmesh. Yes, Pratmesh. Birth is this one. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Can you repeat that again? Birth is that one. I'll give that. I'll give you. Birth, uh, you're talking about the four miseries of life? You're talking about birth, death, old age, and disease? Yes, Mother. Yes, um, that comes in a d- different lesson. I'm asking about the six opulences possessed by Lord Krishna. Okay? Oh, so, I do you know that? Mama? Okay, so the first one. Okay. Who wants to say? I is it order? Who wants to say? Okay, who wants to say? Can you please tell your name? Nandini. Nandini? Yes, go ahead. No, Which... I didn't want to do it. My brother said it. Okay, no problem. So let, I will do the six opulences if you don't know. The first one is wealth. Krishna is the most wealthiest person, okay? The second one is knowledge. He is the most knowledgeable person. He knows everything. He knows past, present, and future. The third is he is the most beautiful person, okay? Nobody can equal his beauty, and that's what we're going to see today, how he looks in uh, two-handed form. And then he's the most renowned he can give up anything. He is not attached to anything. Like how we are attached to so many things, he is not attached to anything. He does not want anything from anybody, but he is completely self-satisfied. Okay, so he's renounced. He's the most renounced person. And then, powerful. He's the most powerful person. Nobody can equal his power. Okay. And then, he is the most intelligent person as well. So, the six opulences. If you want to review it, please go back to lesson four and uh, you will get all the six opulences. Okay? Okay, and then write a short paragraph describing the Vaikuntha planets. Can you please describe whatever you know about Vaikuntha planets? Something. Something that you can recollect about Vaikuntha planets, about how Krishna uh, enters, Krishna is living in each Vaikuntha planet in his forearm form. Remember, Krishna lives in the Vaikuntha planet in his forearm form, and he lives in the Goloka Vrindavana, which is the topmost of the all the Vaikuntha planets. He lives in Goloka Vrindavana and in the two-handed form as Govinda. Okay. And then how how are how is life in the Vaikuntha planets? Mm-hmm. Yes. 
they do not they are uh, even without the noon electricity or fire they still are bright. Yes. Very good. There's no sun, moon, uh, there's no uh, electricity, fire, um, everything is already self-illuminated, okay? And then, uh, what is it with regard to time? Is there any time in Vaikuntha planet? Past, present, future? There's no concept of time, right? Yeah. Yeah, we saw that in lesson four. So, just give description about all these things, okay, when you write your answer. Let's move on to the next exercise. Okay, can you unscramble these words? The first one is? Vaikuntha. Vaikuntha, very nice. Second one? Planet. Planet, very nice. Planet. The third one is a little tough, but not very tough. You came across that word. Okay, I'll give you a clue. Something which is permanent. Eternal? Yes. Who gave that answer? Aura. Aura. Very nice guess. Okay. We'll move to the next one, which is what if question. What if someone asked you how he could get to the spiritual world? What would you say? List some of the things he could do that would help him return to the spiritual world. How can someone return to the spiritual world? By chanting the holy name. Yes, chanting the holy name. What else? You have variety of devotional services that you can perform, right? Like doing RT, uh, performing deity worship, serving devotees, cooking and eating prasadam, and uh, so many other book distribution, preaching to others about Krishna. So many things that you can engage yourself in. And then ultimately our goal is to go back to Krishna. And how, how we can do that? We're going to see that in the next class. Okay? This word from Bhagavad Gita is very important. How can we go back to our original home, back to Godhead? This is not our original home, right? Where we are living, it's like a jail. Because we wanted to be separated from Krishna. We wanted to be masters. Krishna has put us in this jail of the material world and he wants us to realize our mistake and then connect back to him as his eternal servant so this is not our original home which is our original home we are be, we have been thinking that this home where we are living this is our original home but this is like a jail understand and realize it was from my daddy okay can everybody mute your phones please so we have to go back to Godhead. That is our original home, to the planet of where Krishna lives. Okay? And how we can do that? Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, 8th chapter, 5th verse, that whoever at the time of death quits his body, remembering me alone, at once attains my nature. Of this there is no doubt. Okay, so at that moment when death comes and strikes a person, at that moment you should be thinking about Krishna and his, or his pastimes or, you know, about Goloka Vrindavana. So at that moment if somebody remembers Krishna, then there is no doubt that he will go back to Krishna Loka. Okay, but that is our end goal and that is very tough to achieve. The only way we can make sure that we can think about Krishna at the time of death, which will be very painful, at that time it will be very painful. So it's very difficult to think about Krishna. The only way we can ensure that we will think about Krishna is to make sure that throughout our life we have been preparing for the final moment of death. So throughout our life we should be doing as much devotional service as we can engage ourselves in. Chanting and reading, Srimad uh, Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, and uh, serving devotees, and uh, you know, serving the temple, serving um, prasad, and doing deity worship. So many different things. Okay, we may have to make sure that we are always conscious. That is what is Krishna consciousness. We should be conscious of always serving Krishna, and we should be always conscious that we are eternal servants of Krishna. Okay. So, this verse is very important. Remember this translation. Can anybody guess what this verse is? Can you quote the shloka? Yes. Yeah. 
Does anybody recollect from the translation? Can you recollect what this shloka could be? I found it, Mataji. Yes. What's that? Antakela cha mameva. Yes. Antakela cha mameva. Thank you, Prakmesh. Very quick and sharp reply. Thank you. So this is the verse. Okay, very important verse for us to understand how we can go back to Krishna Loka, which is our topic for today. So we have to go back to Krishna Loka. Okay. This is the Lord's home. That is our original home as well. Okay. So among the white of planet in the spiritual world. Okay, just a quick recap. How much is the spiritual world and how much is the material world in terms of... Um, you know, the person gave four, four, three, four, three, yes, four. three fourths is the spiritual world and one fourth is the material world. So spiritual world is very big when compared to the material world. And in the spiritual world, there are innumerous planets, right? Those planets are called Vaikuntha planets. And we just saw in lesson four, how the Vaikuntha planet looks like and how, what is, what life is like in Vaikuntha planet. So, among the Vaikuntha planets, the topmost is called Krishna Loka or it has the name Goloka Vrindavana. Okay? Remember that Krishna Loka, where Krishna resides, is called Goloka Vrindavana and it is the topmost planet. And in Goloka Vrindavana, it's very interesting. If you're here, you would just want to go back there. See, in Brahma Samhita, it is described as Chintamani Dhamma. A place where all desires are fulfilled. Okay? And Goloka Vrindavana is made full of palaces of touch stones. Okay? Full of palaces made of touch stones. Okay? Do you know what a touch stone is? We saw in Sanatana Goswami's story sometime. So, touch stone is a stone that if you touch something with that stone, then it will turn into gold. Okay? So, such powerful and magical is also. So, which means to say that you can be as rich as possible. Okay? And then it also has, Goloka Vrindavana also has desired trees which supply any type of eatable upon, upon demand. So, you just close your eyes and then, you know, you ask, uh, I want to eat this fruit. Then, if when you open your eyes, you will have that in front of you. So, such a wonderful place is Goloka Vrindavana. And there are surabi cows that supply a limitless amount of milk. So these surabi cows will never run out of milk. They will keep on giving any amount of milk that you want. So basically, whatever you desire, everything will be satisfied. So in the supreme abode, the Lord is called Govinda. Okay, in his two-handed form, the Lord is called as Govinda. Okay. And description about the Lord, okay? When you hear the description, you will really fall in love with him. His eyes are like lotus petals. The color of his body is like clouds. That's why he's called Ghansham sometimes. Because Ghansham means he's as uh, dark as a cloud. He looks so beautiful in that color. He wears a saffron cloth. And he, he also wears a garland around his neck. Just a little bit of distraction. Okay. His eyes are like lotus petals. And his color of the body is like the clouds. And he wears a saffron cloth, a garland around his neck, and a peacock feather in his hair. And he's so very attractive that his beauty excels that of thousands of cupids. So cupid is supposed to be the most handsome person. And uh, he is also called as Kamadeva. But uh, if you combine the beauty of thousands of cupids, you know, it, it, Krishna is far more beautiful than that. So we, all, we already saw among the six opulences that he is the most beautiful person, right? So what does Krishna, the name Krishna means? All attractive. 
Okay, so he's very attractive person. You can't really imagine how beautiful he can look. And once you start looking at him, you can't take your eyes off him. He's the most beautiful among everybody. So in the spiritual sky, now let's see how it is like in the spiritual sky. There is no need of sunshine, moonshine, fire or electricity because all planets are self-luminous. Interesting point. Because... Uh, in the material world, we have a sun to illuminate the planets in the material world. But in the spiritual world, there is no need of sun or moon. And the shining effects of those Vaikuntha planets is the Brahma Jyoti. Okay, so we saw what Brahma Jyoti is. That is the light or the effulgence which comes from Krishna Loka. And Brahma Jyoti is the personal effulgence emanating from the Lord himself. And that effulgence that comes from the Lord, it is called as the Brahman. So here we have already seen, I think, in one of the classes that there are three aspects of the Lord. One is Brahman, then Paramatma and Bhagavan. Okay, Bhagavan is the Supreme Lord himself. And from him, there is effulgence coming out. And that effulgence is called, is known as the Brahman or the Brahma Jyoti. And then he resides as the super soul in everybody's heart. And in that form, he is called as Paramatma. Okay, so there are three aspects of the Lord. And this Brahman is like the sun's rays. Okay, so there is a sun planet and there is sun's rays. Okay, so when we see the sun's rays, even though we don't see the sun outside, early in the morning when we see the sun's rays, we know that the sun has risen. So we perceive the presence of sun just by seeing the sun's rays. So the Brahman is just the sun's rays. It's not the original sun planet. So that is why the Brahman understanding is not the complete understanding of the Supreme Lord. Because the Brahman is like a sun's rays. When we want to understand sun, we have to understand about the sun planet. Okay? The whole planet. Uh, so when we uh, talk about Brahman, the impersonalists, they talk about Brahman as being the Supreme uh, Lord. But the Brahman, it does not have any form. It is just effulgence. It is just Brahma Jyoti or light. So he, it's not a complete form. It doesn't have any form. It's just the effulgence. So they believe that that Brahman is the complete or the full understanding about the Supreme God. But that is just a partial understanding because just by seeing the sun's rays, we cannot say that this is sun. Sun's rays is just the effulgence coming from the sun. So similarly, the Lord, Lord's effulgence is not the complete understanding. The impersonalist is a class of people who believe that the Brahma Jyoti or the Brahman is the, the, is the supreme Lord. Okay, so we have to understand their understanding is partial. Okay, it's not wrong, but it's just partial understanding. And here is a picture of Krishna where his body is self-luminous, that he does not need any uh, light to illuminate any place there is, which is dark around him. So this is a pastime from Krishna's uh, childhood that whenever they, uh, he, they used to go to steal butter, they used to break the pots and make a mess. And, you know, so all the gopis, they were very afraid that Krishna and Balaram would come and then they would break all the pots. So they used to make sure that the pots are hanging high up in the ceiling. And even then, they used to break all the pots. So they would make sure that they put all the pots into dark rooms, you know, so that uh, they would, there wouldn't be any light and they wouldn't be able to locate it. But Krishna's body is so effulgent and it has light coming out. Always around him, there's so much of light coming out. In those days, you know, they used to take jewels inside dark rooms to make sure that they can see things. But... Krishna's uh, effulgence, they did not even need any jewels to illuminate the dark rooms. They just enter the dark room and they go spot exactly where the butter is and they used to eat it. So this is how Krishna was so special. Krishna and Balaram, their bodies are self-illuminated. Okay, so this is a small uh, pastime with regard to how Krishna's effulgence comes from his own form. Okay. And Krishna and his expansions, let's see about how many, how he expands himself. Okay, In the spiritual world, there is one supreme God, Krishna. And we just saw that 
He is in his two-handed form in Goloka Vrindavana and he's called as Govinda. Okay? But from that form, he expands himself into millions, many millions of four-armed forms who preside over the Vaikuntha planets. We saw that there are many planets, Vaikuntha planets in the spiritual world. So in each and every Vaikuntha planet, Krishna enters as four-armed forms. Uh, they are known by the names like Purushottama, Trivikrama, Vasudeva, Damodara, Janardana, Narayana, Vamana, Padmanabha, and so many other names. Okay, so uh, some of these names, if you recollect, we would be, uh, we have learnt already in our Tilaka Mantra, right? Keshava, Narayana, Madhava, Govinda, Vishnu, Madhus, Madhusudana, Trivikrama, Vamana, Sridhara, Rishikesha. So there are n number of names like that. So this could be an exercise for you to locate, how to actually identify as many names of Krishna and then write it down and send it. Okay? So these four arm forms, they are compared to the leaves of the tree. And the main tree itself is compared to Krishna in the form of Govinda. Okay? Krishna lives in the Goloka Vrindavana and he controls both the material and the spiritual universes that we saw which is one-fourth and the three-fourth, okay? So Goloka Vrindavana is the topmost planet. And he's enjoying his eternal pastimes with his devotees on Krishna Loka. Although he can expand himself into different forms, he is still enjoying his eternal pastimes with devotees in Krishna Loka. So he can simultaneously reside in many places, okay? That's why he's called as... Uh, Omnipotent or omnipresent. He's omnipresent. He can be present in multiple places at the same time. Okay. So Vrindavana, which is a transcendental place, is uh, a place where Krishna enjoyed his eternal pastimes as a cowherd boy. So with the little Krishna stories that we see, it, it all happened in Vrindavana. And it is the topmost place in all of existence. Okay, and this special place, Vrindavana, when it is exhibited in the material world, it is called as Gokula, a place near Mathura in India. And in the spiritual world, it is called as Goloka or Goloka Vrindavana. So the material, the Vrindavana which is there in the material world in India, it is a replica or a reflection of the Vrindavana in the spiritual world which is Goloka Vrindavana. In Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavana, so when Krishna appeared in Dwapara Yuga and he performed pastimes in Vrindavana, which is near Delhi in India, they are like windows which allow us to see how the Lord performs his pastimes in his eternal abode of Goloka Vrindavana. Okay? So it is like a reflection of what happens in Goloka Vrindavana. In his transcendental abode, Krishna reveals himself to his pure devotees who love him more and more. So Krishna will reveal himself only to his pure devotees, not to just anybody and everybody. So there in Goloka Vrindavana, even the cows, deer, birds and trees are enchanted by the sweet vibrations of Krishna's flutes. Now we cannot un understand how the animals and the birds can react to Krishna's flute. But in Goloka Vrindavana, they are all so much in love with Krishna that they can really reciprocate. And we should remember that Krishna's supreme abode and Krishna's himself are non-different. So Krishna is non-different from Goloka Vrindavana. Now let's go to the place Vrindavana in India. This is a map of India and this is an exercise. <clears throat> that we get a clue that Vrindavana is located 90 miles southeast of Delhi in India. So if you see, this is where Delhi is. This is the capital of India, New Delhi. Mm -hmm. So 90 miles southeast of Delhi in India. So if you see south and a little bit of east, so somewhere here is Vrindavana. Okay, 90 miles southeast of Delhi. And uh, this is like, you know, in the center of the state as well. Uh, so here is where Vrindavan is located and this is a very special place because Krishna personally came down and performed his pastimes there. And Srila Prabhupada says that this holy place Vrindavana is a replica of that supreme Goloka Vrindavana located in the spiritual sky. So, Mother, yes? 
My mother went to New Delhi and um, saw Vrindavan. Oh, really? Very nice. Yes. So what did you know about Vrindavan then? I did not go. My mom only go because it was a long journey. Okay. I I landed in Andhra Pradesh. Okay, that's so nice. So anybody else went to Vrindavan? Has visited Vrindavan? Me, mother, father, he landed in New Delhi and then went to Vrindavan. Okay, very nice. So some of you have already seen Vrindavan, which means you're so fortunate. To be on um, that Mapuji? special place. Yes? I also went to Vrindavan. Very nice, Akshita. Thank you. I went for the Vrindavan Yatra. You went for the Vrindavan Yatra? Did you like it? Yeah. What all did you like? Did you go and visit Govardhan Hill? Did you see the Govardhan Hill? Yes, yes. Okay. So, very nice that you all had been to Vrindavan. Anything special that Mata. you want to share? Mataji? Yes. I this is Jagannath. I went to Mayapur. You went to Mayapur. Wow. Very nice. In Mayapur also you have many places that uh, are correlating to places in Vrindavan. So in Mayapur Lochetanya is very merciful. And you get to see pastimes, I mean, you get to hear about pastimes of Lord Chaitanya as well as pastimes of Krishna. Very nice. So whenever we visit India, we make sure that we go to some holy place that will be really, very beneficial to us. Okay? So India has lots of holy places like this. Especially Vrindavan is the topmost because that's where Krishna performs his pastimes. Okay? Any questions? Okay, so let's move on to the check for understanding. And whoever at the time of, this is the verse that we saw in the beginning, Antakale Chamameva. So whoever at the time of, dash. Death. Death, very nice. Quits his body remembering? Krishna. Krishna, so remembering me alone, at once attains my? Nature. Of nature. Nature. Yeah. Of this, there is no. Is there any doubt? No. No. There is no doubt. Okay. So the true or false sentences. Desire tree supply any type of eatable upon demand. Is it true? True or false? True. True. Very nice. Mm -hmm. On Krishna Loka, Krishna appears in his four-armed form. False. False. That's right. He appears in his two-armed form. Mm -hmm. The third one. The Brahma Jyoti is the bodily effulgence of Krishna. Mm -hmm. True or false? False. 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 True. 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 Yeah. True. The Brahma Jyoti is the bodily effulgence or the light coming from Krishna. When Vrindavana is exhibited in the material world, it is called Gokula. In the spiritual sky, it is called Goloka. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes that's true. So very nice. All of you answered all the questions. I hope uh, you got an idea about Vrindavana. Does anybody have any questions before we conclude? Okay. So please complete the exercise and also send it as your assignment and uh, as an extra uh, optional question please try to write as many names of Krishna that you can gather and then send it across okay thank you all very much for listening so patiently and uh, reciting all the verses so nicely we'll meet again in the next class thank you all Hare Krishna thank you Hare Krishna Mataji, Rubhya Jutta, Vipate, Kundundya Evata, Patita no Kavamya, Vaishnavya Namo Namaha.